Hello everyone, in today's video, we're going to discuss a problem from INPHO 2020. So this is like a very challenging mechanics problem and this question was worth 20 marks in the paper. So those who don't know, like almost 30, 40 students qualified this examination and in the year in which this exam was conducted, the cutoff was like 43 marks. So this question is basically like half the work. Okay, let's start with the discussion. Okay, so what's provided to us is a top view of an assembly and it's kept on a smooth table. Okay, so there is no friction. So the only force acting on the horizontal plane is the string tension when it starts acting. Okay, so now we have a massless string whose length is D. The system is initially at rest with the rod aligned along the x-axis and the string stretched to its natural length at an angle with the negative y-axis of theta. At a certain instant, a bullet of the same mass m has the rod and negligible dimensions is fired horizontally along the positive y-direction. The bullet hits the rod at its right end with a velocity v0 and gets lodged in it. So basically afterwards they move together as a system. The impact is nearly instantaneous. So what they're trying to say with this is that the moment the bullet collides with it, the combined system will have some omega and its center of mass will have some velocity v and this happens instantaneously. So basically the question is that uh, what is the tension in the string immediately after the impact. Okay, so uh, okay guys, so as initially the rod was at rest, that just means that the tension force was zero because there is no other force in the horizontal plane, right? The geometric center of the rod is over here and then we have a mass m at this end. So obviously the center of mass will be in between these two points and the, and let's say the velocity of the center of mass just after collision is v and the omega of the rigid rod is omega in the anti-clockwise direction. So firstly, we can obviously conserve uh, momentum in this case as the tension has not yet acted. So we can conserve um, momentum in the y direction. So initially the momentum of the mass m was mv0. And finally, the system's momentum has to be the same. The mass doubled, which means the velocity has to be halved. So the final velocity of the center of mass is v0 by 2. So now for finding omega, we can conserve angular momentum. The question is about which point. And in this case, it doesn't matter because the tension has not acted yet, which means there is no torque acting on the body, which means uh, we can uh, take the most easiest point and that is the center of mass itself. So the initial angular momentum, initially we only had um, a small m mass which was moving with the velocity v0. So the angular momentum of this particle will be mv0 times the perpendicular distance, right? Which is actually L by 4. So the initial angular momentum would simply become mv0 times L by 4. Okay, so and finally the angular momentum is simply going to be uh, the i above the center of mass times omega of the rod. Now we have to determine the moment of inertia of the system about the center of mass. Okay, so first we have to use parallel axis theorem here. So we know the moment of inertia of the rod about this axis is ml square by 12. And so, which means about this particular axis, we have to add another md square term. So this will be m times l by 4 squared. Now we also have to consider the contribution due to this smaller mass, which itself is at a distance of l by 4. So this is going to be m l by 4 squared as well. So this after calculation comes out to be 5 by 24. So after calculation, this comes out to be 5 by 24 ml square and the omega comes out to be 6 by 5 v0 by l. So now, okay guys, so now let's consider the point of contact of the rod with the string, call that point as a. So if I want to determine the velocity of point a, uh, it'll be a combination of two com uh, two paths, right? So first is the velocity of the center of mass, which is v0 by 2 in the j cap direction. And then we have to add the r omega component, which is going to be minus the distance of the center of mass from the point a is 3l by 4 and times omega. And this would be in the minus j cap, but I've already put the minus here. The whole point of this analysis was to check in which direction is the velocity of a because that will determine what the tension is going to be. For example, let's say after our analysis, the point a had a velocity in the j cap direction, then it would simply mean that the string would become slack and the tension is going to be zero. By analysis, as we got that the velocity of point a is, a, is in the vertically downward direction, it means that the string tension would start acting just dt seconds afterwards. Okay, so and as the impulsive tension starts acting, acting it will kill the co component of the velocity along the string. So the velocity of the point A must become perpendicular to the string. As the tension force acts, everything's going to change. Uh, the omega is going to change. Now, why is the omega changing? It's because the tension is providing an angular impulse, right? About the center of mass, if you observe. Momentum will quite definitely change because the tension will change the momentum in both the y direction and the x direction. So basically, we verified that there will be some string tension. Okay, so the center of mass, let's call the point as C. Let's say the uh, new angular velocity of the rod is omega, anti-clockwise direction. Uh, clearly guys, the rod will have some angular acceleration, right? And it will be in the clockwise direction. Why? Because the tension, if you observe from the center of mass, is providing a clockwise moment, which means there will be clearly an alpha as well which is in the clockwise direction. The velocity is kind of complicated because it will be in some arbitrary direction. Okay, so let's leave that for now. But we are clear with one thing and that is the velocity of point A 
has to be perpendicular to this string because otherwise the string would elongate, which is not possible. Okay, so the interesting thing about this is that if you observe the motion of point A, dt seconds afterwards, so it would be moving in a circle, as you can see, of radius d. So the, you, the thing about this is that if you want to write the acceleration of A, it is going to be towards this point, you know, attached to the roof O, it is going to be Va square divided by d. And um, so this is basically the centripetal acceleration, right? V square by D. Also, by using the fact that the point A is like on the rod and the rod is a rigid body, we can we can write the acceleration of A in an alternate way as well. Let's say this is the point A and let's say this is the point C. If I So now if I ask you, with respect to the center of mass, what is the acceleration of the point A? One thing is for sure, this distance AC is fixed, right? Because it's a rigid body. Omega of the body is in the anti-clockwise direction, which basically means that the point A will be performing circular motion, uh, circular motion about the point C. And when we discuss circular motion with constant radius, there are two acceleration components. And one component of the acceleration is towards the center. Its magnitude is omega square multiplied by 3L by 4. And this is called the centripetal component, right? And then we also have the R alpha. Okay, so the alpha of the rigid body is in the clockwise direction, right? So the R alpha will be in the J cap direction. So the magnitude is going to be 3L by 4 alpha. So these are the acceleration components with respect to the center of mass. The center of mass itself has an acceleration. Well, we have discussed in system of particles that uh, the acceleration of the center of mass is the net force acting on the body divided by the total mass, right? So here, what is the net force acting on the rigid body? So there is only one force acting in the horizontal plane and that is T. So the acceleration of the center of mass is going to be T divided by the mass which is 2m, right? And the, the good thing about this is that we also know the direction of t because it's along the string, right? So the acceleration of the center of mass itself is t by 2m and it makes an angle of theta with the vertical. Okay, guys, so now these two components, as I discussed, was with respect to the center of mass. So if I ask you what is the acceleration with respect to the ground frame, then we have to add this t by 2m vectorially to the point a. So let's do that actually. So this will be t by 2m. So this is an alternate way of uh, writing the acceleration of A. So we basically used the, so basically we took the help of the center of mass to do this. Now you guys may be getting the idea of what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna resolve the acceleration along the string. T by 2M will be there. 3L alpha by 4 cos theta component minus 3 by 4 omega square L sine theta component. So this has to add up to the acceleration of A in the direction of the string. So basically what we did is we resolve the acceleration of A in the direction of the string. Okay, and now, now there can be some tangential acceleration guys. And in fact, there will be some tangential acceleration, but we don't care about that. Okay, let's just name it as acceleration of A n. Okay, so, so basically this would equal V A square divided by D. So now we have finally ended up with this equation. So now we kind of know in which direction we have to go. We have to determine V A clearly, right? Because that's an unknown. And then we have to determine omega. And then we have to determine alpha. So we have to determine three variables. And I think the easiest place to start is alpha. Okay, guys, so let's try to determine alpha. So alpha is firstly in the clockwise direction. We'll simply use tau equals I alpha. Uh, about the center of mass. So the net torque about the center of mass is going to be, so this angle is theta guys. So the component of tension in the vertical direction is T cos theta. So the torque is going to be T cos theta times the distance of point A from C is going to be 3L by 4. So this is the net torque. So divided by the, divided by the moment of inertia about the center, which we determined, 5 by 24 ml square. And from here, we'll uh, get the alpha of the rod as 6t divided by 5 ml. So now we have to, uh, now we have two variables, which basically means we need two more equations. So the other two tools in our toolbox are momentum conservation and angular momentum conservation. So let's discuss how we can apply that now. Okay, guys, so just before uh, the string tension starts acting, uh, that is basically our first analysis, we determined that the center of mass had a velocity of V0 by 2 in the upward direction, right? Then what happened, the string tension started acting, and now we don't know in which direction is the velocity of the center of mass. But we know this velocity is going to be perpendicular. Okay, so this is the situation we were in. So this is not going to be V0 by 2 anymore. Can we apply momentum conservation in this situation? Okay, so when we discussed momentum conservation, we talked about the fact that you can only conserve momentum provided the net force in that direction is zero. Whereas in this case, there is clearly some external force, right? But the trick here is that if you conserve momentum perpendicular to the string, in this direction, there is no force. So we, had, we don't have anything to worry about. We can simply conserve momentum provided it's in this direction. So let's, so let's draw a line parallel to VA. Okay, so uh, guys, before collision, the uh, velocity of the center of mass was V0 by 2 in the upward direction, and this angle is theta. So the initial momentum of the center of mass along this line, let's call this line something as OP. Initial momentum 
uh, of the system is going to be the total mass of the system times the velocity of the center of mass uh, along OP, which is V0 by 2 sine theta. Now, finally, I don't know what the net velocity of the center of mass is. So let's just assume that the component of the velocity along OP is, let's say, V perpendicular. And again, guys, this is only the component along OP because we are conserving momentum in that direction, right? So we can determine that. So the final momentum is going to be 2m V perpendicular. V perpendicular is equal to V naught sine theta divided by. So what's happening is that immediately after the tension starts acting, the velocity of the center of mass along this line OP is V naught sine theta by two. Okay, so now how do we determine the velocity perpendicular to it? So, okay guys, so for this, we are going to use a basic result about rigid bodies. And that is, let's say if we, are, if we have two points in a rigid body, A and B, and let's say the rigid body has an angular velocity of omega, then the velocity of one point, let's say if I want to write the velocity of point B relative to the point A, let's say you are sitting at point A and you want to find out what the velocity of point B is. Let's say this vector is R. So this is simply going to be omega cross r or basically r omega. And let's say we have another c point here and we have to write the velocity of point c with respect to let's say point b. And let's say this vector is r1 vector. So velocity of c relative to the point b is going to be omega cross r1. So I hope you guys are getting the idea. So if, if we have a rigid body that is undergoing pure rotation and we want to write the velocity of one point relative to other, then all you have to do is draw a position vector and do omega cross r. So you'll get the answer. So now let's apply that in here, uh, in this case. And uh, why am I doing this? It's because I know the velocity of point P, right? So we can make use of this fact. So let's say you guys, let's say we are sitting here at point A and we want to write the velocity of the center of mass relative to this guy, okay? So he will say it is going to be omega cross R, which is R omega basically. And the omega, if you guys remember, it was in the anti-clockwise direction. Let's use a different color. So he will say the velocity is going to be vertical direction and it is 3L by 4 r times omega. Now, what will we do if we want it from the ground frame? We'll add VA vectorially, right? So let's do that as well. And the resultant of these two components is going to be our net velocity. Okay, so now I know the velocity of the center of mass along this line, right? It's going, it's equal to V naught sine theta divided by, so this I can also write it as 3L omega by 4 sine theta, right? Because the component along the line is sine theta minus VA. Okay, guys, so, so with this, we have one equation in VA and omega. Okay, so now how do we apply angular momentum conservation? So first we have to choose a point. And so if we want to conserve angular momentum, then we have to make sure that about that particular point, the net torque acting on the body must be zero. And the obvious choice would be point A because in because the tension directly passes through the point A. So initially the mass M over here was moving in the J cap direction with a velocity of V naught, right? So, and its distance from the point A is L. So the initial angular momentum, I can write it as M V naught, L. And so the final angular momentum, it will have two components. Well, first we have to consider the center of mass as a particle and write its angular momentum. So it's going to be the mass of the system, which is 2m times the velocity of the center of mass in the vertical direction. So that will be 3L omega by 4 minus VA sine theta, right? In the last section, we discussed that the velocity of the center of mass, I can write it as the vector combination of 3L omega by 4 and VA. So that's why uh, so I resolve VA along this, so it'll become VA sine theta. This was considering CM as a particle and writing its angular momentum about A. So, and the second component of the angular momentum is the angular momentum of the center of mass about itself. That is going to be the I about the center of mass. Guys, make sure this is I about the CM about itself. So don't make the mistake of finding it about A. Okay, so I about the center of mass, I already determined it. It was 5 by 24 ml square times the omega of the rigid body. Okay, I forgot something. I forgot to multiply this term with the distance from A and that is 3L by 4. So the L gets cancelled out, M gets cancelled out. We have determined two equations for omega and VA and after solving them, we'll obtain these two particular values. Okay, so now we have everything that we need. We have omega, we have VA, we have alpha. So now we are just going to substitute it into this equation. Okay, everyone. So after substituting the values of omega v and alpha, uh, you'll get the expression for the string tension as this particular value. That was it for this video. If you guys have any doubts, you can comment down below. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.